Alrighty, well, it's that time of year again where we're starting to do some upgrades and some changes to our SolarWorks. So this is going to be a presentation covering what's new from 2020 and 2021. So this is if you're making a jump from 2019 all the way to 2021. All right, my name is Alec Cook. I'm an application engineer for Go Engineer. I've been working with SolidWorks for about six years now, I'd say, throughout my college education and career. I started off learning SolidWorks at ASU, and I knew I wanted to work for a company that uses SolidWorks. So I set out to find a company that uses SolidWorks, and I got lucky enough to work for um, Go Engineer. My email and contact information is down below. If you guys do have any questions that you want to ask me offline, feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call. So before I started going back to school for engineering, I spent time doing metal fabrication and I learned how to do ornamental work. And that's the product of what I have learned right there. Um, I use SolidWorks weld mints a lot uh, for projects around the house that are relative to welding or creating metal structures. So if you guys do have any questions or want to see uh, how I use SolidWorks weld mints, uh, again, feel free to shoot me an email. Also, I'm having a boy on the way coming any day now, and my wife wanted me to design some bookshelves for the nursery. So I really enjoy using SolidWorks Visualize um, or, or even PhotoView 360. I, I rendered that image uh, from PhotoView 360. I found images online of the ship lap that Home Depot is selling there. And then I just put that in for the appearance style. I added colors to everything else to kind of give it a realistic rendering of what the bookshelf will look like. And then I was able to show my wife. She always loves being able to see what I'm going to make before I make it. Uh, and then I made some drawings here with relative views uh, to easily pull the dimensions that I needed to uh, create multiple bookshelves so that they would be the same. Yeah, that's along the lines of a topic that I talk about. Another topic I talk about, which is design for manufacturing. So how would I design this product if I was going to manufacture it? So that way I could, you know, make the have the largest margin. If you guys are interested in that presentation, feel free to reach out to me as well. Another opportunity that I really enjoy getting to learn here at Go Engineer is more about 3D printing. So this is my personal 3D printer I have at home. Uh, I really enjoy using it to design little things to solve problems around my house, things that you know bother me. This is one of my projects that I've had that's the Google Home Mini holder. It mounts to the wall. I find that it picks up my voice better. Um, and so I'm pretty happy to have like a better or 3D printing workspace here and, and get started off with uh, 2021 printing quite a few different things here. So this is uh, one of my first prints to get me started again because I'm familiar with what it should look like when it's done. Um, and I recently learned about material properties too relative to PLA and that it absorbs a lot of water out of the air. And that affects the material and how it prints. It's kind of stringy or there can be little... Um, gaps so like you can see here in the e at the end uh, or maybe here in the e if there's water in there when it heats up and goes through the nozzle it actually has a little burst explosion and that's that's what causes the little hiccups in the 3d print causing it to not look as good so get a food dehydrator which will take the the water out of your PLA. So you just leave it in a food dehydrator for four hours and the prints come out a lot better. So it's a cool little tip that I just did learn. All right, next we're going to talk about a uh, service agreement with Go Engineer and these vouchers that you guys get. So there are a couple links here that will give you access to obtaining your voucher. You cre create and set up a uh, account. So all right, so if you guys are looking to get certified, if you come to this page here, go engineer, and then you go to our SolidWorks certification, which that's going to be under training, SolidWorks certification. This drop down makes it really useful for searching or finding the what you want 
on this web page. So get exam vouchers, what we want. This is a video that's going to show you how to set up your 3D experience account so that you can access your free exam vouchers or select the exam vouchers that you want. So if you guys are interested in this, come here to this website. If you guys want to prepare, uh, go to the certif certification section of this page. And uh, let's say you wanted to prepare for the CSWP mechanical design. Then you click that link. This takes you to the SolidWorks corporate red website. And there's total, there's a bunch of notes here on the exam, like how long is the exam, uh, what you need to prepare for for each segment. So there's three different segments, each one differing in the time frame that it takes that you're allowed to take the exam and the number of points that it's required to pass the exam. So this is all very useful information in preparing for the exam. And then also if you guys are looking to take a practice exam, there's a PDF here where all the links work. So if you want to see what the test questions look like, you can click that and then come here and there'll be uh, test questions for each segment. All right, let's get back into the slides to see what, you guys get so with your service agreement you get one exam voucher for each category every six months so you can get one of each one of these every six months all righty these are the topics that i'm going to cover today from the what's new guide the titles that you see here are directly pulled from the the what's new guide specifically to make it easier for finding anything that i show you today if you want to have a reference, it's going to uh, be easier to look up. So in the table of contents for the What's New Guide, you can look for user interface, fundamentals, uh, parts and features will be its own. Uh, I also cover a little bit of surfacing for 2021. And then sheet metal is its own topic. Structure systems and weldments is its own topics. And then there's assemblies and detailing and drawing. So and then we'll finish up with Q&A. All right, to start, I also color-coded the 2020 slides. So the 2020 slides are going to be white with this black title. And then the 2021 are going to be uh, black with green title. So uh, the uh, first topic that we're going to cover here is going to be the open dialogue. They upgraded it so that it's a little bit easier to open large assemblies, let's say in lightweight mode. There's a little like feather or a little scroll bar that you can drag down so that you can select the mode easier. And then also the file types are larger so you can read the entire file type and it's more organized. Enhanced tool tips. Those are really cool. That's what you're seeing here in this little image on the left hand side where it's going to display a tool tip with a little description of what that tool does or command does. I thought those are really useful for new new users to become more familiar with the software. Uh, feature manager folders, if you're very organized and like to keep your feature manager design tree or your feature manager tree organized, you can create folders and then drag and drop items into that folder. And then lastly, material search in the materials dialog box is a thing now so you can search for material which is useful for taking any of the exams because you're going to need to apply materials to your part and measure the mass so as you can see here on the right hand side we have a wider list with more organized files uh, we have a slide bar here as well that we can easily open up into lightweight or resolved so we can open this part up here in resolved mode. Also the top where the tabs are, it's going to be a little bit more organized and easier to turn on the tabs. So these are going to be, if you want to add, uh, I don't know, this is where you find structure systems or weldments for parts or any of the other tabs that you see over here on the left hand side. So we can take a look at this part in its position. We'll go ahead and Hover over these tooltips so you can see there's a little animation that plays with them showing you what that tool does and how it works. In addition, you can just right click on a feature and click add to new folder and then simply drag and drop other features into that folder. 
We can also edit the material to see the material search box. So as you can start typing some specific material that you may have put in, and it's easier to find now. So you don't have to go looking through the titanium alloys to find that specific material you're trying to apply to your part. All right, next, this is the 2021 page that is gonna be black with the green lettering. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, in 2021, there was a collapsible command manager which you can see here, it's collapsed in this image and then active window highlighted. So from your task pane, it'll highlight the active Solidworks window when you're searching or when you're hovering over to see which one's open or active. Accelerated zoom, I'll have to show you how to turn that on. There's a system option setting that you'll need to adjust to be able to turn that on. The welcome dialog box, we got some new colors for the welcome dialog box, as you can see here. Uh, you can go with a darker shade. It seems to be like something that's going to, that's common with Windows products. So maybe they were just kind of getting in line with that. Uh, and then lastly, there's some other user interface enhancements, which is what you're seeing here in the picture. This is the first thing that I recommend to any students that I'm training uh, is to change that. So this is really cool that I won't have to remind them anymore to change their search bar up here to command search. Typically, by default, it was set to SOLIDWORKS help, I believe. Also note that before you open your component, you're going to want to make this system option change in order to take advantage of the zoom. So prior to opening this up, you'll go to your system options, display, and then over here, these grayed out ones. That's why you'll have to do it prior to opening up a part or an assembly file. Because once they're open, they are grayed out and you can't make the change. But you're going to want to turn off display scroll bars and graphics view for parts and assemblies. This will allow you for that, that zoom. So let's go ahead and get uh, on a top view here. And then I'll just hover my mouse right here in the center and I'll zoom out. So that was, I just rolled forward once with my finger. So now with the accelerated zoom, if I hold shift down and roll forward once, it's a lot farther, zooms out a lot faster. So that's going to be your accelerated zoom. Also, if we want to take a look at the collapsible command manager, that's going to be up here on the right hand side. We'll select that and the command manager hides. You can bring it back by simply just selecting one of these tabs here and this will bring back the command manager. And then over here on the right hand side, you can repin that to keep the command manager locked in like it traditionally is. I also talked about the welcome dialog box background color. That's going to be found under system options. And then you go to colors and you'll notice there's a background. So you can drop that down and choose a different color. So if I click OK, it'll set me back to the traditional light coloring. And again, the last but my most favorite change here is the fact that this is set to uh, search for command search. Uh, also, a fun little thing that I, I recently learned is if you press S for the shortcut bar, that actually automatically uh, allows you to start typing in the command search. So if we knew that we wanted to put in a reference plane, I can start typing reference and then I can see reference geometry and then I can go to plane here. So that's pretty cool. If you just know that you can press S, it automatically allows you to start doing a command search. Next topic is going to be the 2020 fundamentals. The changes to system options that you see here are in particular, they made a lot of changes to external references from the system options in 2020. Everything you see here, uh, a lot of it has to do with the envelope publisher, which you'll see in the assemblies topic once we get there. They made some changes to the envelope publisher. And so these are some of the options that you're going to want to change in order to make that functional. For the closing a document, closing documents when saving a copy, now you can select save as copy and open in the save as dialog box. You can close the original document. So if the original document has unsaved changes, the document remains open. In SOLIDWORKS 2020, most assemblies and drawings that were saved in previous versions 
open as fast as those saved in SOLIDWORKS 2020. Pass, you would have to update all of your files, which could be pretty extensive if you guys have a network drive with a ton of files and you are upgrading them from one version to the next. Previously, to access the open modes, you had to bring up open dialog box and navigate again to the file you already found in File Explorer or PDM. And the last one here is going to be selection sets. That one's pretty cool. I'll, I'll go ahead and get into SOLIDWORKS to show you, but you can add new selections to the selection set. Let's go ahead and create a selection set. So I'm going to select the three outer edges of these circles here. So I'll right click and go to selection tools, save selection. Actually, I selected, accidentally selected the wrong one. Let me just angle this so I don't do that. So I'll select three here, right click, selection tools, save selection. Then I'm going to do new selection set. From the feature manager tree over here on my left hand side, it created that folder called selection sets. And if I drop it down, I can see the edges that are selected in that selection set. Or I can select it and it selects all three. Now let's say I wanted to add these other three holes. Uh, that may have been added at a different time. So now I want to add those to the selection set. So I'll go ahead and select these three new holes, right click, and then I go to selection tools, save selection. And then now I have an option to choose the selection set I just created. So I'll select that and I have the three new edges in here. So when I select this, all six holes are selected. So that's selection sets. For 2021, fundamentals, again, there was more changes to the system options. So in 2021, they are making an effort to improve performance uh, overall. And this is actually a three-year plan. In the past, they try to add in new things, new functionality based on what our customers have been saying or service changes they've been requesting. So instead of going towards that, they're just focusing on the core functionality of SOLIDWORKS for the next three years. And 2021 is the first year. So we're going to see a lot of performance improvements. Changes to system options. One of the big ones here is this color palette. It shows which color is applied to the color scheme settings. So whether you want to look up, typically when I would go to look up uh, what is causing you know, some feature to be a color, this is where you go and you have to select each item and it would pop it up over here. Well, now it just automatically shows you that color. Um, searching for commands when you are making adjustments to like your toolbar, you can easily type in the command if you know what the command name is. So we'll take a look at that and then what other fundamentals is. So let's just jump into SOLIDWORKS here. And then we're going to do the command search. So if I come here to customize, so I right click in my command manager, go to customize, and then let's go to the shortcut toolbars. So here's my shortcut toolbar for uh, assemblies. Well, let's say in a sketch, and that's because we're in assembly, but in a sketch, uh, you could have all sorts of different types of commands that you want to pop up when you press the S key. Uh, so for instance, cut extrude or power trim. Um, but let's say you wanted to add the spline tool so you can search in there for spline and then you can drag and drop it onto your shortcut bar. So this is the new search uh, in the search command. It's also under commands here. You can search for it there um, and other locations. Uh, for other fundamentals enhancements, that would be materials box. So let's go ahead and open up one of the materials here for a part. All right, nylon. So if I click edit material, this box now you can expand the material dialog box to make it larger or smaller. Uh, also, the quick copy was removed from the measure tool. So when you measure something, it would copy it to your clipboard which could be annoying. Um, so it doesn't automatically copy like the length or diameter that you're looking for. You have to come over here and then press control C to copy that uh, diameter or that dimension. All right, so for parts and features, 
SolidWorks 2020 improved graphical mesh and B-Rep bodies by making it easier to decimate the mesh. So that's what you see here. There's the file that came in. So you 3D scan your piggy bank and you're going to 3D print it or something. So you bring it into SolidWorks and it has all these facets. And this is going to make the file slow and harder to work with. So you can decimate uh, the mesh here, make it smaller and easier to select faces. So it can you can use SolidWorks to find geometrical shapes. Uh, you can add references, reference accesses, and reference planes to graphics mesh body or mesh B-rep body by selecting facets, facet fins, or facet vertices. You can use those facets as planar references, facet fins for linear edges, and facet vertices as point references for reverse engineering, whatever you're doing. Uh, for holes, you can define the end condition of a hole to the depth of the drill tip or to the depth of the shoulder. The options are available for all hole wizard features, including hole wizard assembly features and advanced hole types with the following end conditions of blind, up to vertex, up to surface, and offset to surface. So repair missing fillets and Repair missing fillet references. I'll have a cool little example for that one. And I got another cool little example for the surfaces. So let's go ahead and take a look at an, first the graphical mesh B rep that we are going to see here. So we click decimate mesh body and then we select our graphical body. Then over here, that's the percent reduction. So we're going to say we want to reduce the total number of facets by. 50% or so. So we'll put in 50% just to make the file a little bit smaller. Then calculating it takes some time. So it'll calculate through here. Um, and we can see that, you know, it's taking a long time because little fine tuned edges there have a ton of facets. After do it, reducing it by 50%, you can see here there's a dramatic difference in the number of facets. Next, we're going to add an axis to the center of this gear. And we can use this cool little paint selected facets. Or we can, there's some other facet tools too that we can use. So tan, we'll do a tangent select face facets. And that'll grab all these faces on the inside and allow us to find where the center of that cylinder should be. So that adds in an axis that we can work with for recreating the geometry. Once the geometry has been recreated, we can go ahead and do a body compare. So body compare is going to be used to tell you the difference between what you scanned and what you created inside of SolidWorks. And then it's going to have a color graph here indicating areas there's too much material that and areas where there's not enough material. And then obviously the green areas are where you're pretty spot on with your design and reverse engineering it. Next, we'll take a look at some STL modifications. You can directly edit STLs now in SOLIDWORKS. So this is an STL that's brought in, kind of like a graphical body. We can apply a fillet just from the shortcut toolbar, and then we can apply it to two different edges. Once we've applied our fillet, let's say we want to make a change, so we can edit that fillet and change it to a chamfer. Now again, this is directly editing an STL file. Uh, we also maybe want to move this face, let's say five millimeters in. So we'll reverse that in and then we'll have to extend the surface so that we can use the trim surface next. So uh, go ahead and extend that past and then use trim surface. So that way we can remove any of the faces that we don't want, like the face that we're replacing essentially. So we can directly modify this STL's moving surfaces. And then next we can see that there's a hole here. In 2019, they came out with the delete hole from surfaces. And they expanded on the delete hole functionality more in 2021. So we can see here that we can just delete that hole and then that patches and fills it, which that's a pretty sweet little feature. And then we can also do delete and fill now. So we're gonna delete these holes on the side and fill them so that it's going to be a smooth surface for 
the next version of this part. Um, and then repair missing fillets. I got a nice little example for that one. So this, this feature is actually pretty cool here. The, I've Personally, I've used it myself like three times now. Uh, it's when you go in and you make like a change to your part where there was existing fillets and then you open it up and it looks like this or your part goes like this. Uh, it has this little red X. So it says some filleted items are no longer in the model. Edit the feature to reselect the items. So new in 2020 is you have the option to right click in your items to fill it and you can select repair all missing references or clear all missing references. So my suggestion is start with the repair and see what it can do on its own. Uh, and then whatever's left. So you can see here in red, the edges that it's missing. It's not able to update those. So I will click clear and then I can just rotate around to the back here and I can just grab these faces or these edges here and click the green check. So then it automatically updates that one. And then I have one more as a good example here. So we'll come in, right click, and you can see it's these edges, these edges here, one, two, and three. We'll go ahead and attempt to repair them. It looks like it's gonna repair them and we'll click the green check. So allowing this, the software on its own now will solve its fillet problems when you make changes. So that's repairing missing fillet references. Okay, so next we're gonna take a look at some of the sheet metal and weldments features that are new to 2020. In sheet metal, really there was only giving convert to sheet metal better functionality, essentially. Their improved flat pattern results, uh, the sheet metal parts created in SolidWorks 2020 and later, you can convert multiple disjointed tabs that share a common bend face. You can use relief cuts, that use improved logic to determine where to include the relief cuts and the relief cuts will behave similar to relief cuts created with the edge flange tool. For structure systems and weldments, so this is primarily going to be on structure systems uh, since that was new and it's relatively new to SOLIDWORKS. It's different than weldments. For the pri primary members, so you can put in primary or secondary members and the primary members have what's have a point length option. So I'll, I'll get into showing you the new options with point length. So you have, instead of point length, you have point to point, up to point and up to plane for the primary members options. For split members, you can split primary and secondary members by specifying references or dimensions. And for pattern and mirror support, you can pattern and mirror structure system members using linear pattern, circular pattern, or mirror tools. So let's take a look at that in SOLIDWORKS. All right, so I already have structure systems active, uh, but again, you just right click, go to tabs, and you'll find structure systems. So we'll click structure systems, primary member, and then here are the different primary member types. We have path segment members, reference plane member, point length members, and face plane intersection member. We're going to start, this is the one that got some love this year in 2020. Uh, so typically how we would use this was first select a profile. So we'll go ahead and just use the ISO config. So that's the configured profiles and I'll use pipe and that size works for me. All right. And then let's see, select these four there and I can see if I apply a length, whoops. All right, let's select these four primary members and we'll set them to be 200. There we go. So that's your most traditional. Uh, now we can also use up to plane. So that's, this is new in 2020. So what I, I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this plane and go ahead and click the green check. So I'm going to actually continue to add primary members here since we're exploring this point length option. So the next one that we want to take a look at is going to be point. 
So I'll go ahead, nope, not point, um, up to point. So I'll select this point here at the top for the end point. And then the points that it's going to go to are going to be each one of these corners. So it just basically says from this point to that point, extrude the profile that I had selected. So we're going to right click that. And then lastly, we can explore point length a little bit more. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to select this point and it's doing it normal to the plane that that sketch was on, but we can change the direction of that profile by selecting this line here and then we can reverse it. So it goes along the path. And if we know that dimension, we can extend it so that it goes all the way to that edge there. So those are the new options that you see here for point length members. All right, so in this example, we're going to want to split these members with this member here. So that way, when we get our cut list, it's accurate. So we'll go ahead and edit this feature here. And we'll select all three. So holding control down, I'll select all three of these members. And then down here at the bot bottom, I have split member. And it's asking me for a reference to split it by. So I'll select this reference and that splits it. So that's one way of splitting it using other members. Now let's look at splitting members by dimension. So let's select this guy and we'll say split. Instead of reference, we're going to set dimension. So let's say every 20, split it every 20 millimeters. Uh, or we can do an instant split. So we can set it to either split by six. So let's see what that looks like. We'll click the green check, exit, and let's take a look. So over here on this side, we can see our split members. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And over here, we got our new split members as well, our structure members that are split. So that is split member. And lastly, we're going to look at some functionality for the shed. All right, so to test the pattern feature, we'll go to features, linear pattern. We're going to select a direction. Um, and then we're going to leave it up to reference. We'll set our instances to six. The reference is going to be over here. And then if I scroll down and select bodies, there's a new structure members option right here. So I'll highlight that box and I'll select my structure system from the graphics. And then it gives me a nice little preview of all of the structure members that are going to be patterned. So I'll go ahead and click the green check because that looks good to me. All right, next we're going to add structure system features to an existing feature. So we have our existing structure system here. So let's go ahead here and go to structure systems and we'll select that. And then we'll go to secondary members. Since we have a plane there, we're going to use the support plane member. So this is the plane that we're going to use. And then the members, we're going to put it between each one of these members. Now note, use this chain link if you're going to be selecting members um, in order. So we'll select here here and it should populate it. Let's actually go and select a profile so that we're populating something when we're adding these. So use square tube and 80 by 80 by five. So then it automatically populates it. Let's get back into here. So it's asking me to select the, the next member. If you don't have this chain link, you have to select member two and then L pattern one and then select this one again and then that one and then this one and then that one. And so you do it twice. So this just kind of saves you a bunch of extra clicks. So I'll right click and that looks good. And I'll exit. And it's going to ask me for my corner treatment. I'm going to say that looks good too, just for the sake of this. And then next I'm going to test out the mirror feature. So we'll go to features, drop down linear pattern, select mirror, uh, mirror face plane. This should have been modeled properly so that there's a plane in the center. Looks like the right plane's in the center. And then the bodies to mirror. 
we now have structure systems. So I should be able to select this one and it's going to do all of the members in between. And click the green check. That's actually pretty sweet and nifty and easy to build. So that's structure systems for 2020. Uh, SolidWorks 2021 parts and features. So we have adding and evaluating equations. We'll take a look at that. Uh, that doesn't really get a good, give a good description. Redo support for parts and features. That's what you're seeing here. So we've been able to undo everything in the past. Well, now there's redo um, moving forward. We also have transfer body materials or part materials. And that's going to be when you insert a part into a part. This is a perfect example for inserting a part into a part. Um, we don't have a material specified. So let's just go to insert part. All right, this part has a material applied to it. So we'll click open. And then when I scroll down, you can see there's an option for body material now. So I'll just go ahead and click OK. And then you'll notice there is a new material applied, 5052H32. And that's because of this little part down here. So you can now import a part into a part and bring that part's material over and convert your current part's material. Adding and evaluating equations. So I now have a part in here that has some equations in it. Uh, let's see. I know this guy here has a equation in it. It's really it doesn't have any equa great equations, but the point is, is it'll show you how these work. So I'll go to manage equations. So this is going to be the internal ID for Hatchbox internal ID, my 3D printer. I want to center my spool on the pipe that it's on. And then that's the pipe OD. So let's say in the drawing you wanted to reference these uh, equations. They made it easier. So now when we go to our custom properties here, we can type in, let's say, hatch box ID. Then when I go to the type and drop that down, I can select equation. From the equation or value and text expression, if I drop that down, I have global variables, and then I can select the global variable I set for Hatchbox internal ID, and it's going to pull that value. Now I can reference this in my drawing or in notes in a drawing or something. And if I change that equation, that value is going to dynamically update. And then redo support for parts and features. Um, that one's kind of self-explanatory. It's the opposite of undo. Uh, sheet metal and weldments for 2021. We have the edge flange feature, so you, you can create edge flanges on nonlinear circular edges or of non-planar faces. For structure systems and weldments, there's a graphical manipulator in structure systems, which you probably had seen uh, when I was playing around with it in creating the structure systems using patterns. Trim for in miter joints. This one is huge for me. I always like to work with three inch by one inch tube steel or two inch by one inch tube steel. And that's the exact scenario you're seeing right there. It's like a two inch uh, face and a three inch face that you're trying to miter. In the past, this is what you would get and you would have to do some cleanup to make it look like this. Where now they give you that option. Uh, and then generating cutlass ID. Uh, that's got a little bit of love too. So let's go ahead and take a look at this trim for in miter joints. All right, so here's an example where we have two different profiles. We have a square tube and a rectangular tube. So we want to fix this miter. So let's go ahead and open this part up. And then we're going to go here and we're going to scroll down. And I see that this trim extend feature is what's controlling how those are mitered together. So I'll edit that feature there. And then up here on the corner type, I see that I can select miter. And when I select miter down here at the bottom, you can see I can change the equal angle miter, which will make it look like what you would traditionally see in previous versions. Or I can do the new and improved option. And since this was modeled properly, all the children update as well properly. So that's the new feature there for weldments for trim and end miter. And then for structure systems, that graphical manipulator just makes it easier to manipulate um, the profile in the graphics. So, all right, SolidWorks 2020 assemblies. So we have the envelope publisher, which is what you're seeing here in this little animation. 
It's pretty sweet, and it allows you to add mates to sub-assemblies, add mates for components to sub-assemblies that would take a lot of time in your larger assemblies. Then Explode Views now can use uh, multiple components. Well, sorry. So when Exploding Views now can explode multiple components while taking advantage of bounding boxes created around the selected components. Flexible components allow you to reuse components in other assemblies that would have out-of-context references. You can now reattach those out-of-context references and make them in context to that new assembly. I know that was a mouthful. And then I have a cool little animation for these mates to show you the quick mates context toolbar and flip mate alignment of with mates. Those you guys are going to love that you're going to use them on a day-to-day -day basis. This is going to be everything that you're using inside of SolidWorks assemblies. Then assembly patterning as well. Got a few upgrades, um, quite a few upgrades. So we'll, we'll go ahead and explore that. Um, so let's go ahead first and look at envelope publisher. Okay. So let's say we have this top level assembly. We have some sub assemblies in here, uh, and connectors that we want to connect to our pipe assembly. And we want to be aware of, let's say the ducting and some of the doors that are, in, that could be in the way of the pipes. So let's go ahead and go to tools. Envelope Publisher. This is first going to ask us which components do we want to use as envelopes. So we'll go ahead and drop down and select our components. I'll drop down connectors first and I'll shift select all the connectors, which is pretty sweet. It just throws them in there. Then I'll go to this sub assembly and I'll select these door sub assemblies. So you can actually add sub assemblies into the uh, components to envelope into a, a different subassembly. Um, and then let's go ahead and add the ducting as well. So we have the ducting, two doors, and all the connectors. And then the destination subassembly is going to be this pipe subassembly. So we'll go ahead and click add group. Now that we have this new group, we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, we'll open this up and then we can see here we have envelope publisher. Um, we can open this up the subassembly in its position and we can see all of the components that we added to the envelope show up kind of in a ghosted like appearance. So now you can add pipe routes over here to the connectors and know where your door and ducting is and it makes it easier that way. Let's get back into that subassembly though. or back into the top level assembly. Another cool thing to note that I like to show here would be if you wanted to take advantage of your envelopes for creating display state. So if I click add display state, I'll go ahead and call this um, pipe envelope and it's active. So any changes I make here will affect that one. So I'll right click and notice I can say invert selection. So that inverts the selection and then I can right click the highlighted components and click hide components. And then now I have this sweet little display state. So if I jump to the traditional display state it has everything. And then if I want to see my envelope, what's in there, I can see what's in there. That's pretty cool. So the explode views now can explode multiple components while taking advantage of a bounding box created around the selected components. So let's take a look at that. So we'll go to assembly, explode view, uh, and we're going to go ahead and select multiple components. So we got these three components here and down here at the bottom is use center bounding box to order components, use rear bounding box to order components, and then use the front of bounding box. Uh, I'll already tell you this is the one that we want, but let's go ahead and see what it looks like when we explode it. So explode it up. It auto spaces our components apart, but we can see that this is not how it would explode in real life. Um, so we can select through these options while we're still making a change. And if we get to the use front of bounding box, that's the option that we want. So we'll go ahead and click done. And that's, the new explode step using bounding boxes. 
Next, we're going to take a look at flexible components. Okay, so this is our spring assembly that, or this is our assembly here that we have a spring we've created and it's it's got in context, but we want to reuse this spring here in our new assembly. So we have a new collar and sleeve there. So let's go ahead and open up this component here, or this assembly here, and then we're going to go to insert components. And we're going to go for this spring that's already been created. We're going to open it up and drop it in. All right, so to mate this guy up, uh, I know they have accesses, so I'm going to turn on hidden accesses. So I have that axis right there. And then this guy in here, uh, he's probably got spring access. Yep, sweet. So I can do like that and mate them. This is a little foreshadowing to assembly mates or the quick mates context toolbars. Look at all these different types of mates I can add. So let's go ahead and add that coincident mate. I'm going to add another mate here to this collar. We'll go ahead and make that coincident as well. And before I, so I can move this collar up and down, but the spring doesn't update. And if I, I uh, want to connect that face up to there. I have to fix that out of context reference. So you can see here, it's got an out of context reference. Let's see what external references says to. So out of context face top of spring. So the top of that spring is out of context. So if we right click or left click, we have the option for make part flexible. So when I do that, now it's asking me to select each of the flexible references and reattach them to geometry in the assembly. So this is going to be the geometry in the assembly that I want to reattach it to. And then I'll right click to accept that change and notice the spring dynamically updates. So now as I move my collar up and down, the spring updates properly. All right, for the quick mates context toolbar, take a look at some of the most common used mates. So we're going to add a slot mate between that washer and the slot there. Now we can see from this context menu, we can drop down and select if we want it to be center in slot, distance along slot, percentage along slot. This is all avoiding having to get into the mate command up here. So we'll go ahead and add that center in slot. And then we'll add a center profile, which also shows up between our parts. Uh, and then we can note flip mate alignment right from the graphics arrow. We don't have to get into the part. We don't have to right click that mate. We don't have to go to the breadcrumbs. It's already there, easy to access in the graphics area. Next, we'll go ahead and add a width mate between these four faces. So typically you select four faces and then you can add a width mate. Notice the width mate has some new options that you can change as well. You can do centered, free, dimension, or percent. So we can also flip that mate alignment right from the user interface and then add a concentric mate to center it up. Notice here too, we can right click from the breadcrumbs, the mate that we just applied, the width mate, and we can select flip mate alignment. So if you guys do miss it and you move your mouse too quick, you can always do it from the breadcrumbs. Next, we're going to explore adding a limit angle mate. So now you can add limit angle mates from the con pop up context toolbar. So we'll select limit angle mate, and then it gives you um, the option to select your small angle, your large angle, and the angle you want it set at. So it's set at 45, but it can go through 0 to 90. So that's all done from the user interface without having to get into your mates. It's pretty useful. Next, let's take a look at the patterns. So the first one we're going to look at is going to be opening this sub assembly here to replicate the whole pattern that's created by the whole wizard feature. So we're going to do pattern driven component drive pattern. It's a mouthful. And we're going to select the driving feature, which is that whole wizard feature, which has a drip pattern that's driving it as well. And then we're going to select seed. So that's the seed or the parent kind of. And then we have the option to align to seed, which isn't going to orientate it properly, which we're going to want it to actually align with the holes, which have the proper orientation. 
Next, we'll take a look at the end cap and using some circular pattern features that are new. So we're going to want to add a circular pattern of this bolt here so that it matches up with those holes. Um, but as, as typical in engineering, you get into it and you realize that the holes don't have a nice pattern and they're kind of offed. Well, now we can modify instances instead of skipping an instance and adding one later and having multiple features. We can just clock that to the right angle, go over to the other one that's off, modify that instance, and move that to the proper angle. So that was circular patterns. Now we'll take a look at using the mirror pattern inside of assemblies. The mirror components is way more intuitive. It's easy to see with these little images here what you're going to be, how the orientation of your component you're mirroring is going to look on the other side. Also, we found that, you know, maybe when you mirror it, it's not mirroring about the proper thing. So we can mirror about center of mass and that looks like it orientated it properly. Or we can mirror it about the component origin, which that seems to get those bolts to line up properly. And again, you can get a better visual from those little buttons that were added on how to mirror your components. All right, 2021 assemblies, we have saving a defeatured model as a configuration. I thought this was really cool because typically you have to save them as a separate component. And that's when you use the silhouette method for defeaturing. That's where you can create a configuration for a defeatured assembly. For the chain pattern property manager, you can set your spacing method to be a distance along a path, like you see here, or you can have it set to be a linear distance. So you can say to follow this path and whatever distance it is like that in particular, when you get to curves, that's where it matters. For auto resolving lightweight components, once you have open a component in lightweight, any components that you expand from the feature tree will auto resolve the component or the subassembly. Export interference detection, if you find it easier to review the interference detection results in an Excel sheet, which we mostly like to re review results in Excel sheets, you have an option to export those results to the Excel sheet. And then last for the slot mates can have default constraint types, meaning you can make the center in slot option the default option from document properties. We'll go ahead and take a look at those in SolidWorks. Okay, so let's go ahead and explore the defeature command. So I'll command search defeature. This is the silhouette method. So move forward with that. Select component. So let's select this component, add a group. Looks good. So it's going to populate the defeatured component over here on the right hand side. Just we'll say that's good for now so we can get to the important part where we can say create a new configuration instead of having to save as a new document. That's what it would do traditionally. So let's go ahead and click the green check and see what that does. So if we come over here to the configuration manager, we can see under our default, there is a default feature now. So if we click here, that's going to give you the default. Here's this configuration of the defeatured default version. So you can only have one defeatured configuration per parent configuration, by the way. All right, auto resolving lightweight. Let's go ahead and open this up in lightweight mode. So I'll go here to my recents tab. I'll expand this component. I'll select the mode to be lightweight and I'll click open. So this should open faster. So if we pay attention up here, this opened in 16 seconds, that opened in five seconds, which is pretty cool. So we have these components and assemblies, sub assemblies in here. Like I said, if I expand a sub assembly, it sets it to resolve. If I expand a component, it sets that component to resolved. And then let's do interference detection and see how we can export those results. So if we go to evaluate, we'll select interference detection, calculate, finds a bunch of interference, and then we can click save results. You click save results, it's going to save it out to wherever you want to save it. And then uh, let me just open it up because I already have it. So this is the Excel sheet that it created. And you can see here that you have the component one and component two, the components that are interfering, their interference by volume. So you can go through and say, 
well, you know, this is a nut that's interfering with the stud. Well, probably they're supposed to be in contact. So uh, this might be easier for you guys to go through and evaluate your results. Next, for 2020 drawings. So we can add hole callouts in a section view. So when you take a section view now, you can add those hole callouts. Uh, they added alternate position view for parts. So traditionally, alternate position view was for assemblies that, you know, you could have like a flashlight head that rotated and you can get different views of that. Then there's chain dimensions. We'll get to see a cool little example of that next. And you can also add dimensions to your cosmetic threads. So cosmetic threads improve your overall performance. Being able to dimension the outside of the threads is important. So now you can add a cosmetic thread call out dimension using smart dimension. So you would select this line and that line. All right. So another cool feature in 2020 is the ease of use for changing the sheet scale. So you can see here at the bottom of the status bar, you can just open that sheet scale and it's referencing this notepad file or this text file. Uh, so you can add different sheet scales that you commonly use. You can in 2019, this is how you would have to change the sheet scale. You'd go to properties, punch in the new sheet scale, apply your changes. And then um, if you wanted to change it back, you have to go back into that sheet properties. Well, now we can do a user to find and just apply it right from the user interface. And that up updates that sheet scale. So next we can take a look at creating a detail view. So now the detail views are typically going to be twice the size of the original scale. So it was two by three, now it's four by three. But from the property manager, you can change the sheet scale pretty easily. Next, we're gonna take a look at the chain dimensions. So we can add chain dimensions. We'll start our first line. Then we'll, every line after that, it's gonna add a dimension uh, in a chain link fashion. And it also has a pretty new cool overall dimension. So we select add overall, and that's gonna give you the entire overall dimension. And then it's pretty robust. When you delete a dimension, it'll automatically fill it in for the new dimension in between the two. And you can also convert it to baseline if you're really not liking the chain link dimensions. So we'll select convert to baseline and it updates properly and works pretty nicely. Next, we'll get into another sheet here to take a look at the alternate position. So we're gonna select this pump here and then we're going to go ahead and add an alternate position view. It's going to ask us for the configuration. So we'll select the configuration and click OK. And now we can see in phantom lines that there are alternate positions of this component. So you can see there we can add dimensions to the alternate position to give the user a better idea of the other position for this component. Detailing mode. You can use detailing mode to open large drawings quickly. You can add and edit annotations within the drawing, but the model data is not loaded, not loaded into RAM, meaning so it's not going to take this huge assembly and load that all into RAM and slow you down. Detailing mode is useful if you need to make minor edits to drawings of large assemblies or drawings with many sheets configurations, many sheets configurations or resource intensive views. Uh, these are the types of annotations that you can modify here. You can add and edit ske sketches as well and print PDF, DWG or DXFs. For 2021 detailing and drawing enhancements for detailing mode, there was a few upgrades. So there's robust referencing in detailing mode. There's break crop view. So you can add a break view to a you can add a break to a view, or you can add crop views and detail views in detailing mode. You can add whole callouts now in detailing mode. You can edit existing dimensions and annotations in detailing mode as well. Context toolbars and menus in drawings. So in drawings, you can access context toolbars and menus for center lines, sketches, drawing views, and markups. You can click any item to display the context toolbar or right click an item to display the context toolbar and menu. VDA balloons and drawings, you can tag inspection points according to VDA requirements. And VDA balloons are frequently used in the German automotive industry. 
And then there's just general performance improvements to details and drawings. Thank you guys for attending. Again, here's my contact information. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email.